over. Start fresh. All right. How do you want to start this one? Let me know when I can start. Go ahead, Sammy. Um, so let me tell you guys a story. So I was... Okay, you can shut up now. It's showtime. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Four Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. With me, as always, is my co-host, Samuel Martinez. Ooh, that guy sucks. We are in the same studio. This is the first time that we are actually in the same studio for a Mindless Four Podcast episode. Do you ever realize that? For it's been a first time in Seven months. Forever. Seven months it's been. We've been doing it like this, and we're still doing it like this because uh, me and Sammy are currently in Arizona. <laughs> While the other two are in sunny California. Uh, today on the show, we have with us Knights of Horror member, Will Martinez. <laughs> you just muted him. You were doing your bubble bubble and we couldn't hear what he said. Damn it. How can you know, you know how this goes. You know how, how it's mic works. Talking? It was get muted, man. That's not cool. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know anything. I'm just here. <laughs> oh, Will, you know what I thought of? You can bust the Sammy next podcast. You can use your phone for Zoom. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Maybe experiment. I don't know. Experiment. I just thought of that. I don't know. It had nothing to do with what we were talking about, but we were talking about that prior before going on. Yeah. It, she's pretty good video, too. Um, also with us, staring at the moon. From the moon. Himself. Knights of Horror member and host of the Howling Hour, Mr. Rob Estrada. What's going on, guys? How you doing? I'm doing like good. The living, breathing werewolf. The living, breathing. Yeah, sometimes. He's the pack leader. If there's a pack leader, he's the pack leader. He makes freaking Team Jacob look like Team Shit. <laughs> bro, I've seen him without a shirt on. It's pretty good. Pretty good, bro. It looks, you know. Look at those gains, bro. He wakes up every morning, 5 o'clock, clanging and banging. Clanging and banging. Clanging and banging. <laughs> oh, God. I miss you guys so much. How you guys been? <laughs> Oh, well, I think that's a question for Will. Will, oh. how you been? Uh, I've been all right. A little busy, but uh, we back. You know, it's been a little bit since the video, but here we are. It's been a bit since we've all been together on the podcast, man. It really has. Um, Rob, how you doing, man? I haven't seen you in a few weeks. I think the last thing I saw you at was uh, Drex Society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been good. Um, you know, just doing, doing, still doing work and still uh, – you know, putting up YouTube content, keeping myself busy. So, been on good. The, on the Fence Movie Reviews, Howling Hour. Go check them out. Yeah. Living, breathing, bro. The jack of all trades Jack himself. of all trades, man. <laughs> Roberto Estrada. No. Uh, that is, special that shout out I. to Rob this haunt season. He really stepped up, helped Knights of Horror out a ton. He's a legend, filming. bro. Living legend. Um, a legend. Also, if you saw I the... Prefer- uh, the, I think I think the best video we shot this season was probably the OC drive through haunt Bro, that thing was or lit. the drive through uh, <laughs> car wash. Oh, nice dude, fun. that was that was that was awesome, dude. I really wish I had been in the car with you guys. I was really felt like I missed out. I, was great. <laughs> I, I really did, honestly. Like I felt so bad because I wanted everyone to come. Obviously, with Will's uh, where he lives, it's a little bit harder for him to get out to places. But um, a little tr- Rest assured, uh, hopefully HHN returns next year, so you'll see a lot more of Will next season. I can promise you that. And you'll see a lot more of Will throughout the year leading up to next season. So, I mean, that's, you know. This is true. This, this is, is true. true. Some more me content. I mean. You, like, you don't get a choice. <laughs> you, don't get a choice. <laughs> you don't get a choice. I mean, you could skip the video, but, I mean, who really does that? That's mean. Who does that? Well, actually, I don't think you're allowed to do that, like, legally. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I'm out in Arizona right now. Uh, we're filming. I brought the laptop. I brought the soundboard. We're we taking Nights of Horror on the road, on finally. The road. Um, we are going to be t- attending our my first Arizona. Actually, this is my first out-of-state haunt ever. Ever. Um, it's Fear Farm in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I'm super stoked. Uh, Sammy's already been. Uh, what, can you, what can you tell me? What, I, what, what can I be expecting? Uh, well, I did. I think we talked about this earlier on. Uh, this is, but this is a whole other podcast. Whole other podcast. I don't it's know which one's coming out first. So you know which one's coming out first, but you know, <laughs> you're gonna get three mazes and a cornfield. Sounds fun. And uh, you got the. It's gonna be boom, 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 bang, 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 bro. Right, one after another. Damn, sounds fun. It'll sounds be a good fun. time. Sounds fun. 
Um, we're here to talk a little bit about recap of haunt season. Uh, some of the things we like, some of the things we maybe didn't like, and some of the things we hope come back next year. Some of the things we that can improve for next year. I don't you know. know. What I, you know what I want to start with? What do you want to start with, Sam? How was everyone's Halloween? How was everyone's fun? Halloween? It's it, honestly. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about mine, but I want to hear what you guys did for Halloween. Um, and I know what you did for Halloween, but I still want to hear it. Uh, let's start. Oh, with you go ahead. What's up? Well, how was your Halloween? Oh, got you. Um, Halloween night. Um, uh, me and a few friends, we all like quarantined for a little bit just so we could hang out in person. And we kind of just like four of us went to someone's house, set up a projector. And we watched um, Paranormal Activity and Rocky Horror Picture Show. So it was a good time. It was a good time. Nice little hangout. Um, of course, I've got this bag of um, depressing leftover candy because no trick or treaters were out to take any. So uh, now we got now we got a ton of candy. Uh, not mad at it. It's just a little depressing. So my first question is: Did you do the time warp? Of course, I did the time warp. Okay. Actually. So on after the movie it ended, just so we could do it again. Did we did the time warp again? Time warp. Uh-huh. That's from the. Is that from the movie? That's from the Rocky Horror Picture. Yeah, show. didn't Jack Black and Tenacious D just cover that? I think I just saw their cover for that. It's a great cover. I, I love them so much. They're incredible. They did a really like cool hard rock version of it. It was dope. I, I you know I'm gonna be honest. I've never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, so I don't know how it originally sounds. A phenomenal movie. You gotta get on that. That's a really good one. Hey, uh, I'm just saying we're gonna have a little bit more free time, so it could be a potential live stream in the future. True. This is true. Yeah, it's, we gotta uh, feel, we gotta, we gotta little, feel the I mean, airwaves. It's a little outdated because I use some, uh, you know, interesting language at times. But um, <laughs> a lot of people still like it, though. It's still got a cult following. It does. It definitely. I does. mean, you got the iconic uh, RKO pictures in the beginning. You don't see that very often anymore. Um, that's mm-hmm. iconic. But yeah, Rob, you, I know you were. No. Oh, go ahead, Will. Yeah. Huh? Go ahead. If you can see it. In theaters, like at a midnight showing on Saturday, that is just some of the most fun you'll ever have watching a movie. That is just a great fucking time. Just don't tell them it's your first time. Actually, no, what's do up? tell them it's your first time. You have a Wait, what's time. that? Tell them it's your first time watching it, and they'll make sure you have a great time. Oh, yeah, this is <laughs> true. Wait, like the actual theaters will do something special for you? or 100%. We can't, we can't tell you because that would ruin the surprise. Was it like exactly what I saw in Perks of Being a Wallflower? Mm, could be worse. I'm going to say I've seen it then. <laughs> I'm scared to find out what that is. <laughs> it's a good time. You know what? I, I thought about it too. We should probably, I, I'm going to look into it, but I know certain AMC theaters will let you rent out a theater. I'm thinking we should do like a, a Knights of Horror Friends uh, rent out and just invite a bunch of YouTube friends. All of us come out. Uh, try to get somewhere local that it meets in the middle with everyone and we can do like a whole movie theater rent out and watch something. Financially. What happened? How does that work out like financial wise? I, sounds- I don't think it's very expensive. I think it's like. It's either like a hundred or hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah, but you can. Yeah, a, I, you can- I, I think I saw something like just recently, like in the past week or two. It was like. 100 or 130 or something like that to rent out a theater. Yeah, but you can have up to 20 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, if, split that up. If you split that up, that's like, do the math. What is that about? If you have, if you have, let's just say it's 100 bucks and you have 20 people, it's like five bucks each. Yeah, that's yeah. cheap. Oh, shit. Okay. And we're, allowed yeah. to, and we're allowed to choose any movie we want? Or uh, do we have to watch what they have? I think, I mean, they have to have it in stock. They have probably majority movies and stuff. I'm saying we do like a fucking horror movie of some sort. Let's watch The Exorcist in theaters. Mm. Oh, fuck yeah. Some Dolby mm-hmm. too. Dolby. <laughs> and all Dolby. All around you. All around you. <laughs> uh, Rob, how was your Halloween, man? Uh, you know what? Um, I feel bad. Well, maybe not too much. I got to hear what you guys did, but... Um, I felt bad because I was hearing all these, um, you know, stories of people just being stuck at home and knowing, you know, no one coming to get candy. But I, uh, my in-laws, me and my wife went to her parents' house and they're out in Whittier. And then um, her brother and his family and then her sister and, and her family 
they came over and I guess there's this block that's near where my wife's parents live that they pretty much normally they block it off. But I guess, you know, cause the pandemic thing, um, they were just letting people drive through, but they were still, some houses were still doing the trick or treat thing and other houses were just doing displays. But I mean, pretty much the whole block was just all yard displays. And I'm pretty sure I, I posted a video in on my uh, YouTube channel of, you know, just kind of quick stuff of everything. Um, but it was, it was actually really awesome. And then, we went um, like a couple blocks down and other people were doing stuff. You know, how, uh, there was a lot of house displays, you know, just with uh, whether it's, you know, decorations or, you know, some animatronics and stuff like that. But it was, I had a, real, a lot of fun and I was with all my, um, you know, my nieces and nephews and I'm a big kid. So I, you know, I have a blast when I'm with them. So, but I, I had a, I had a really great Halloween and got to go out and trick or treat and let them get all the candy. And then I took some. Seems like that's the way to go. Seems like you and Will had good Halloweens. Uh, I think Logan probably had the best out of all of us, though. He went trick or treating with John fucking Stamos. Yeah, I heard. Heard I, that's awesome. <laughs> he like texts us out of nowhere. He's like, "Yeah, I'm trick or treating with John Stamos and his kid right now." I'm like, "What?" Logan lives a really interesting life. That I I'm like, never "Full check. house, John Stamos." That was quite the text to receive. I know. He's just, we're all, we're all like, Will's hanging out with his friends, watching movies. He's trick or treating with his niece and nephew. I'm pretty sure me and Sammy were at home. Just, I was watching Halloween and uh, Ghostbusters. What were you doing? I don't even remember what I did for Halloween. I know I was home. <laughs> I know I played Xbox. I think I was playing Madden. I did. I, I probably played Madden for Halloween. I did do a round of Dead by Daylight for Halloween. I remember that. <laughs> um,. But yeah, my Halloween was it was depressing, guys. It really was. Uh, I was actually invited to go out to. Uh, I got invited to go out to two, well, one haunt, and then I was gonna go hit another one. But uh, I had came down with like a stomach. My stomach was hurting that night, uh, and I was seriously just so tired from the season that I was just like, I kind of want to just stay in tonight, be safe. You never know what's what's gonna pop off tonight. Um, I highly regret doing that. I wish I would have went out and went to those haunts, but. It was kind of depressing, man. I mean, just, just seeing the whole street blacked out with their lights off. You know, usually they throw up in the porch light or they'll have, like, some sort of light to indicate that they're giving out candy. And my whole street, other than, like, three houses, and I was one of those three houses, had their lights on. We had about 15 kids come out to the come out to the, um, to the to the house to get candy. Uh, and I was, like, honestly just hooking them up with candy because I had a feeling we weren't going to get a lot. We usually, by 6.30... We usually start getting kids because uh, we live close to uh, our Norwalk City Hall, and they do an event there, and then a lot of those trick-or-treaters will come to our neighborhood, uh, and they start coming by, like, 630, and literally, fuck, we only had, like, 15 people come, and it was sad, so I was just giving the kids a bunch of candy because I felt bad for them, too. They were probably going trying to go house. A lot of people were doing – what they were doing was they were driving around looking for houses to go trick-or-treat, and then they would let their kids off and then go get the candy. Um I was being very, uh, very uh, safe with it though. I had my mask on the entire time. Every, every someone came up, uh, I had a bottle of hand sanitizer. So every time I gave out candy, I, I sanitized my hands. But um, I, I was being very safe with it, and you know, a lot of the I just felt bad for the kids, man, because you know, um, a lot of kids look forward to Halloween. They want candy. They want to, you know, dress up, you know, have a fun time. And and I think for Halloween this year, landing on a sa Saturday, and I can speak for me, this was just, I mean. Unless you went to like a haunt or you were at a party or like or whatever, I felt like Halloween was such a waste this year, especially it being on a Saturday. Like if we if it would have been on a Saturday in a non pandemic world, I think Halloween would have been so much more fun. I agree. All I know is if anyone would have come to my home on Halloween, because we had candy and their parent was right there, they were gonna about to get a beer. I wanted to be like, hey, here's a beer for the parent. <laughs> There's a handful of candy for each kid. Thank you for coming. It was it was it was just depressing, guys. I I, I honestly like by the other night I was just it didn't even feel like Halloween night to me anymore. Like yeah, the movies were playing on AMC and we, we you know every year me and my dad will sit and we'll watch uh, Halloween on AMC. Uh, <laughs> and every year I mean every year my knowledge of that movie gets better and better. And my dad's just always shocked when I'm telling him all these facts. I'm like yeah they filmed that in Pasadena. Yeah that's uh, if you pay attention to this part there's a blooper. If you pay attention to that you know I'm, I'm telling him all this shit and he's all shocked like he's hearing it for the first time. And he probably heard it before but he doesn't remember shit a lot. But uh, it was cool to hang out with him. We watched that and then. Like I said, I watched Ghostbusters 1 and 2 that day, and then, yeah, I mean, 
I, for some reason this season I was very I think because it was last year's maze that really made me like want to watch Ghostbusters this season. I mean that maze to me was just perfect and watching one and two it was just like and I had not seen them in a long time so it was basically like watching them for the first time. Uh, but it was it was a good time. Uh, Dead by Daylight played a match of that. Played a little bit of the Ghostbusters video game which has been on the channel if anyone's been watching that. Uh, we've been doing gameplays of the video game because I felt hey. It was at HHN. You guys might enjoy this video game, too. And I hope you guys have been enjoying the video game. So, But, yeah, that was my Halloween. Did you not watch Ghostbusters of leading up to Haunt Season last year? I watched Ghostbusters 1. I think we did it with the – we did a TLV live stream. We were, we were at TLV's place, weren't we? Mm, was that the night that we watched House of a Thousand Corpses? Yeah. Then, yes. Yeah, because we watched – I think TLV did that live stream last year, and we got invited to go out and uh, and, and chill with Bro. them. And uh, – they did. I think they did House of Thousand Corpses and Ghostbusters, but you know how those live streams are. No one really watches the movie. <laughs> Everyone talks. Everybody has a good time. So I, I wasn't paying attention to it too much, but every time I'd look over, I'd see a couple scenes. But, I mean, I, it was actually a time for me to, like, actually sit down and just watch it and pay attention to it. So, but yeah, that was Halloween 2020. I hope 2021 is far more better. It'll be on a Sunday, which will be interesting. It will. Um, man, we'll see. We gotta wait a whole another what six or seven years for another Saturday. Unless well, when, when do when do when's the next leap year? Uh, I don't know, but I don't know when it'll be on a Saturday yet. I'd have to look at the calendar. Yeah, it's gonna be at least another six or seven years till it comes back to a Saturday. It could be longer. By that time, I actually might have a kid of my own. So. I feel like being as that it will be on a, sa- a Sunday next year, like it should just like fall into a Saturday. Like let's just make Halloween a Saturday. Let's next just year. make holiday uh, Halloween a two day event. Yeah, no. I'm okay with that. Like Coachella, just make it Saturday and then like <laughs> Sunday have a curfew cut off. Yeah, now people can be home. Halloween parties will still happen next year. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the thing though. If Halloween lands on a Sunday, people will do Halloween parties uh, Saturday night going into Sunday morning. So I mean, yeah, see. See, Saturday can be for the adults, and then Sunday is for the kids. Makes sense, but you'll be all hungover. Saturday's for the bros. Yeah. Have a, have a drink on me. There he goes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's. I hope next year's better. Uh, this year, as you guys all know, I mean, I, I think, and I, and I think Rob can back me up on this, but we've made the most as, of what we can for this haunt season. Um, yeah. And, again, I, I do feel a, a really bad for – the other members of the Knights of Horror who didn't either get to experience anything or we didn't get to experience anything with them. Um, so next year I'm hoping that we can plan stuff more accordingly. Okay. Uh, it, it was a little bit harder this year because, uh, you know, unlike Horror Nights or, or, or Scary Farm or Queen Mary or, you know, the haunts that are usually permanently at their locations, we, me and Rob were doing a lot of driving to, like, fucking Corona, to Ontario, to, like, all these other places, even to go see the yard displays uh, and all that, but... I mean, I still think we had a good time, but it, it it was more of it wasn't just like we hey let's go let's all meet up at fucking Horror Nights on Friday night, you know? It wasn't something we could do. It was more of like oh we have this event this day, and then the next day we have this one, and then the next you know. So, well, speaking of that, what was your highlight of your Halloween season, each of you? If you have Ooh. One. highlight of Halloween season, um, let's see. Well, I think I might have to go with. Halloween night itself. I had a pretty packed October of some not so fun uh, uh, things I had to take care of. Just a lot of work, but uh, Halloween night was fun. Um, let's see, because I I, haven't, I didn't get to experience any uh, haunts this year. Uh, this close. This close. <laughs> um, that shall not be but, named. That shall not be named. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice of horse Voldemort right there. For now. Yeah. Hey, it's all right. We had we had a fun Halloween night, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's good. I mean, I'm glad to hear that you got to spend time with some friends. I mean, it's been a tough year already where we couldn't see a lot of people, so I'm glad you got to have fun with friends. It's probably good to see each other after a long time. And you got to watch some horror movies and eat candy, so that was cool. Among other things, I'm sure. You can't go wrong with, uh, with a bag of candy and some horror movies. <laughs> Rob, what was the what was the highlight for your haunt season this year, man? You know what I like. I honestly can't pick like one thing because just from I mean, Halloween night was awesome because I got to chill with my family and you know my my nieces and nephews. Um, uh, I guess throughout, obviously, my birthday is you know in October, so that's a big thing. But 
uh, just being, um, I guess, involved with the channel and getting to do stuff. I mean, it, I don't know how you felt about it, but just being able to like go to like uh, like the Corona Haunt for me, the Corona Haunt, I would probably uh, stood out a little more just because of how involved I got to be and like just as far as recording and, and you know and just all that stuff, everything with that. So I, I mean, like I loved everything, but specifically like. I would say maybe the Corona hot because I really um, the way I was involved and I like, I love recording. I mean, I love being on, on, on camera and stuff. Cause I don't know if you guys can tell I'm you know, kind of people <laughs> person, but I love like filming. I love like getting ever since I was little, my uncle would let me use this camera and I would get shots, but just getting to record uh, uh, you and Tim, you know, going through like the maze and stuff and, and, you know, just trying to get the right angle and everything. I like, I, I was excited, ecstatic to do that. So uh, probably Corona hot for me. Corona was cool. But Sammy, would you like to make the announcement as to... <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my name is Samuel Martinez. And I just want to say one thing and one thing only. We came, we saw, we conquered, and still the remaining undisputed trying not to get scared champions of the world is the Knights of War. I told you it was not a prediction, but it was a spoiler. Spoiler. I couldn't let the boys down. I couldn't let you down. I was not going to lose. Two and, and O this season. Me and Will worked extremely hard last season to get that title back, and I was not going to just let it go this season with me having to step up and represent the entire team. So, here's a little promo for next year, because they're already calling a 3v3. I got six members. <laughs> you got five members. I got five members in California. I got six <laughs> total. If you want to take a trip out to uh, Fear Fear Farm, I mean, I can have him ref, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not competing. He's not competing. I got three... Very fearless members who will happily step up. I, I may even take a break next season because I want the boys to shine. And, you know, Will doesn't get scared. Rob doesn't get scared. Logan doesn't get scared. So. Sam? Oh, terrified. Terrified. <laughs> petrified. <laughs> petrified. <laughs> Anthony? Gets scared every now and then, but, you know, last this past season... I mean, what can I say, Tim? I, like I like I said in my promo after I won the first round, Tim, just do us all a favor and sit this next one out. Plain and simple, dude. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. But uh, back to my highlight. I think my highlight was actually watching uh, you guys go through the, uh, the 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 scary car wash. That was fun. I had a lot of fun watching both videos. Dude, that was a lot of fun. Dude, that that was awesome. I did that. I, I love that. I can that was, confirm uh, that that actually is returning next year. They've already came out on social media and uh, oh, they, that's and, awesome. In comments, they've said that they would be returning next year. So I'm super stoked for that. Um, I'll add that to my list of things I want to go to next season. I know we'll make it a make it a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, I haven't gotten a chance to watch the uh, the uh, video on it. Well, how they pull that one off? It was cool. I mean, so you start. So, you know, you go down, you go from the back entrance of the thing and you pull in uh, and there's two lanes you can go down. It's about, what was it, Rob? Like a 20, 30 minute experience for us because waiting in line and then actually yeah, going to the car Yeah, from, be from beginning to like getting in line to when you're actually done, I'd say 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, even while you're in line, it's such a fun time. I mean, you have the uh, scare actors. They're going up and down the rows of the cars and, and then just messing with you. They actually open your doors and stuff, which I thought was hilarious. I didn't think they were actually going to do that, and they did that, and it was funny. They made actually Rob get out of the car and work, which I thought was hilarious. That was my favorite part. <laughs> um, they actually gave him, like, a squeegee and told him to actually, wipe Actually, no, that was my windows. second favorite part. What was your first favorite? When they opened the door and got Robin? No, no. My first favorite part is when they opened the door at the middle of the car wash. Oh, yeah. At the end. <laughs> yeah. Be careful because I actually saw videos – of them opening the car when the car was getting soap on it. And, like, the entire interior door was just filled with soap. And I was like, this is why you lock your fucking car when you go through it. It's common <laughs> knowledge. Um, no, but the funniest part, I think, for us was uh, 
they actually opened the door on Rob's side for uh, the part where they actually, uh, it's like the big, you know, the, where, they, where they blow down your car after you get it, you know, all washed and everything. And they opened this door, and I didn't think they were actually going to do that, and they did it. And it was just, if you look at Rob's footage on his channel, like, the fucking audio just goes to shit. <laughs> yeah. That's how loud it's like, it was. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, it was a great experience. Um, shout out to Forrest. If you're watching, uh, he was actually the clown that opened the car and, and told Robin, you done messed up now. Uh, that was hilarious. I think me and Rob, got yeah, that in. was, that was funny. We got a big laugh out of that. She like locked the door as he was talking to us and then he like <laughs> went and reached in, unlocked the door and opened the door. <laughs> I was dying. What about, what about the He's guy like, you who done? Like, threw the chainsaw in my face, dude? Like that, that was, was dude. that was terrifying though. Like that thing was like this close <laughs> to my face. I've never had a chainsaw that close to my face before, but it smelled great. I didn't have either. I, you know, it's not very frequently when you get chainsaws, uh, thrust into your face. It, yeah, but it in, smelled in your great. Face. It smelled great. You know, you know, you gotta love that smell of chainsaws. Reminds you of Horror Nights. Yeah, it is. It's really, can I get that as like a candle? Is there a candle for that? I'm pretty sure you could find it somewhere. It's like, it's just basically gasoline. <laughs> yeah. Of gasoline coming out of a chainsaw and fog. What would you say, Will? Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I think, uh, you know, Magic Candle Company, I think they've got a, uh, they got a fog scented candle for like the Horror Night stuff. That's legit. I know they got a, uh, a cologne that's, that smells like the Pirates of the Caribbean water. I got the Pirate's Candle. It is it smells it's like amazing. A, it smells like when you walk into the ride. It's a, it's a little different, but it's an amazing candle. It's a real good smelling candle, regardless. All right. Note to self. When we go to Will's house, we'll steal that candle. Bro, it's not as good as my hand, my hand soap here. Yeah, Sammy made custom hand soap at, uh, at for his uh, sister's birthday. They went to go make some custom soaps or whatever. I got to try it. It actually smells really good. Yes. Damn flex! What? <laughs> Flexing over here. Yeah, um, custom, custom uh, hand soap. Yeah, I would say for for us, uh, I I would think um, the car wash was a, a fun one, uh, but I think uh, for like the last two or three years, every haunt season, if you guys watch the channel, we're always with TLEV, no matter what. It, it always just works out like that. I don't know why it just it does. Um, this year in particular, because, you know, a lot of, it was a lot of traveling. So it was a lot of like, oh, let's carpool and go to this, let's carpool and go to that, or let's meet up here. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to both Corona and Drex Society for letting us host Try Not To Get Scared Challenge this year. Uh, we had some complications the day uh, we did it at Corona to another uh, haunt prior, but um, Corona, you know, that day, it was a stressful day for everyone on the crew. I mean, I was calling everybody left and right. Uh, and I got in contact with Corona explaining them the situation and they let us literally film it. Cause we were like the last, one of the last groups. So that was fun. Uh, Rob almost destroyed the maze. Uh, <laughs> and that was cool. What part? I, I mean, uh, it, it was honestly like a, a Sammy move. Honestly, like I, I can see you probably doing that. He's like back and forth. <laughs> no, it's because he was filming us, our reactions. So he was walking backwards, and he actually thought he was supposed to go one way. And the scare actor came out and like stopped immediately, and like he backed <laughs> into a wall. And I'm like, Rob, you break it, you buy it. <laughs> You're gonna buy the whole maze. Yeah, no shit. And then mo that Monday, I mean, I guess it was just a, a hell day for all the home haunts because of the winds, and they just destroyed a lot oh, of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, thankfully, a lot of them were able to get up uh, before Halloween weekend and, and reopen, which was really cool. Uh, so shout out to all the hard work and dedication that went to this season alone. I mean, this was a very tough season for the haunt industry, uh, obviously, with, with the whole pandemic and everything and, and trying to socially distance uh, scares and trying to just give you an all-out – great haunt experience but make it safe for everyone to experience as well um i think they did a great job i i, I will definitely applaud them all. yeah no i i really do they they did a great job i was at uh direct society uh media night opening night and every every after every group went in they they had each of the characters in their rooms disinfect all of the uh areas for them and then corona did an amazing job at the same thing as socially distancing and, and disinfecting um the one that I was very, very, I mean, and this is, they did a great, amazing job last year, but for the circumstances, how they had to work with this year was Pirate's Cave, dude. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty lit. Pirate's Cave was legit, dude. The whole, uh, the show and everything, that felt like something that you would see at a theme park, not even lying. Like, 
it felt like a show that you would actually see at a theme park. It was that high production quality. They did an amazing job this year, and I and I can't wait to see what they do next year. Um, obviously, I think if if everything goes to plan, they'll probably bring back their maze, uh, and maybe expand it or adapt on the the whole origin story line. But um, it was an amazing job, and and they did a really good job with social distancing too. They had markers on the sidewalks and everything, and had told everyone where to go. Uh, and they did an amazing job. So shout out to you guys, Pirate Cave. We love you guys anyway. You guys are always treating us good, and, and we, we, we return the favor any way we can. Um, Urban Legends. Uh, Rob, you and I went to that. <laughs> Compared to everything, uh, where can you put? I'm going to be honest. I, I'm still going to defend it. I enjoyed the times that I went. So I I liked it. Like I, I mean, I can understand, like, talking to you beforehand and then going through it um you know when we went through it i could see you know you know opening you know a weekend them trying to you know fix some stuff and and everything but when i went through it i had a good time like the whole time i enjoyed it. there wasn't again you know there's some you know uh some story stuff with one of the with one of the um the, sh the i guess the show parts of it where you know it's not in the it's not in, you know, the video when you're watching, but the whole overall, the overall experience, I enjoyed it. And I thought it was fun. I had a good time. So, I mean, we had a lot of fun. Um, TLV, we went yeah. with them opening night, a lot of fun. we got to actually make it on the, uh, that was a highlight too. We got to be on the, uh, the promo video, uh, for opening night. They, they put us in their video, uh, got to represent the Knights of Horror, dude, you know? I hope everybody saw that. You know, I hope everybody's like, "Hey, I know that guy." Or they saw that, and they're like, "That guy's a fucking liar." That event sucked. I'm like, "No, it didn't suck. You just had a you just had a bad time. I had a great time both times I went." So, Urban Legends, you got our, you got Knights of Horrors vote. I had a fucking blast, and um, it was your first year doing stuff, and I will defend that event till for a while because it, it was just a. A great event. I had a fun time. I, you know, the first time I went was with TLEV, and um, it, it, we had a fun time. We were listening to music, hyping each other up. Second time I went was Robin Robin, and <laughs> I mean Robin was just <laughs> cracking jokes. Me and uh, me and Rob were just cracking jokes. It was a fun time. We had we had a good time. So, um, I think a lot of people thought I was Robin Robin's child because I was in the back seat. So. Or, or if you're uh, Eddie, you know my my wife and Anthony, not my wife Anthony. <laughs> did, you, did you ever see that? No, what would happen? Hey, Eddie, like Eddie, because I I guess in Rob's uh, video he says I'm here with my wife and Anthony, N not my wife Anthony, but my wife and Anthony, and, <laughs> and then uh, Eddie just started cracking jokes on that, so oh, yeah. that was fun. Um, what else? One I think I'm probably the only one of the group that has done is uh, Stranger Things. And there's talks about actually getting everybody in the group together and pitching in and doing that because uh, I want to do it again, and I, I want Will to see it, and uh, I know Rob and Robin would probably be into it as well. Uh, the Stranger Things experience, I think, and I went opening night, so I'm curious to see if we go later on, like in February and all that, if, if they've changed anything. I'd be able to tell you guys because, like, I, I know exactly how that went down. But that fucking experience was so phenomenal. Like, I lost my shit of how production value that good that was the entire and, and the trivia part is the entire event took place in a fucking parking garage that's and crazy that's it, crazy it's just nuts how they transformed that into the world of stranger things like really is like they did a high production value on that and it was just beautiful i enjoyed every minute of it uh, i had a few complaints but i won't get into it due to like spoilers and stuff but uh um I had a few complaints. If you guys want to watch my full video, and if you guys already been to the event, I, we actually have a video on the channel, uh, my, my whole review on it. Uh, but no, other than that, I mean, the complaints I had are very minor, and it's just, just mostly characters. But um, everything else, dude, I mean, from start to finish, while you're waiting to go in the actual experience, like, there's so much interaction there. And, and when you go in, like, they tell you to roll up all your windows and, and put on the radio station. So I had the radio station full blast best way to experience it and you have the actors walking around and and each scene you know you you listening to the audio while they while they're performing it is just it's beautiful and the, and the actors are 110 percent there um so i think we're going to do another trip uh hopefully in february uh i want to talk with uh, the guys whoever didn't get to go uh and we're gonna we're gonna all pitch in i think it probably probably will be me will um robin robin um, so we'll, we'll look into that and see what's going on. Um, 
I, I think the only thing about that is I, I didn't see any differences between general admission and VIP other than they got an exclusive food menu, a photo op, and m- maybe better seating. But even with my general admission, my seating for everything was beautiful. I, could, I saw everything perfect. Well, if we get the if we get the photo op, then you and Will can look like mine and Robin's kids again. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Especially, I, I think I think the next time we go, though, I think we all have to dress up and 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 theme the car because they give away prizes for people who like have the best costumes or whatever. Yeah. So Will dresses up as a wizard. Will the wise. Um, I was gonna say you guys could all go scoops ahoy. Scoops ahoy. It's all by scoops ahoy costumes. Um, hey, we, have, we actually have someone in the car named Robin, so it works out. There you go. There you go. That, that automatically makes, uh, Rob, Steve, um, me and I, I can go as Dustin <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have, uh, we'll have, Will go as Mike or Will, whatever one he wants to be. Will can go as Will. Yeah. Will the wise. It's perfect. Will the wise. Will the wise. Or I can go as Billy with this fucking haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I like Billy. Ble- and like uh, bleach my hair and get like a fucking mullet and denim on denim for yeah. that. <laughs> Blast them, like kill them all and shit as you're coming in, you know? It's all good. Get that get that 80s glam going. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's Bro, good. when I saw that uh, when I saw that uh, Metallica banner in, uh, was it season two or something? Or season three, maybe? Season two. I don't know. No, it was that- in season two and season three. So badass. like... Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah, it's, it's cool because they're like from was, California. I think I think at one point they were actually they played Metallica too. I, I think they did. did. They? Yeah, I think they played. I think like Whiplash or something. And I lost my shit because I was like, oh my god, they're playing Metallica and Stranger Things. Holy shit! I mean, it's been a minute. I mean, it, it's already good enough. I mean, the soundtrack for those seasons are so fucking good. Um, it seems like season two they started stepping up the sound- soundtrack because they got probably more of a budget, and then season three they just went all out. They're like, we're gonna put every fucking song we can think of in this <laughs> in this uh, season. So, okay, I enjoy yeah. it. I love how they had like a you know specific song for each occasion. You know, like uh, you know introducing Billy. They had that uh, "Rock You Like a Hurricane." I thought that was yeah. badass. Like, cool well, like when freaking Eleven dumps Mike, uh, they play "Cold as Ice" by Foreigner. Yep. Oh, that's a, one of the best scenes. One of the best things ever. I am dumping your ass. Um, yeah, Stranger Things was good. Uh, Corona was good. I had fun at Flesh Yard. I had fun at, at, at Drex Society. Got my Universal Monsters fix. Haunt season all in all, I mean, from what we made out of it, I think was a, a success for Nights of Horror this year. We had we had a very solid year. Um, Hayride was fun. I enjoyed Hayride, personally. I, I had a good time at Hayride. Um, Rob, I don't know how you felt about Hayride this year. See, uh, here's the thing, and this is how you can change your mind if you like. When I watched it, when I first seen it, because I think I went, I, I feel like it was that Friday that it opened up. Yeah, we went, um, I, we went the same night, but different times. Right. I had gone in before you, and, and then, you know, I'd seen it, and I was just like, ah, I don't know. Um, and then I talked to you, and then, you know, just saying some of the stuff you're saying, and then I thought about it after, and I was just like, you know what? The, I like the drive in, and it was pretty much like, and I, you know, like I was telling you, like, I like theater, you know, I like, you know, kind of shows and stuff like that. It was pretty much that, you know, along with, <clears throat> excuse me, along with, you know, some clips from Crip TV or, you know, some short, some short movies. Um, you were at the drive-in and you were watching a show. And I was just like, you know what? Like, you know, I was, and we, had, you know, we talked about this. I was, my mindset going into certain things about all this haunt season was I was always expecting like, well, you know, I'm used to HHN and I'm used to, you know, knots and, you know, you know, you know, all these other big haunts. And I was like, well, no, this is just, this is going to be different. And I got to look at it with different eyes and I can't hold stuff to a certain, you know, this standard when it's going to be, it's still, it's still at the same level, but just in a different way. And yeah, yeah I would say after I talking to you, I looked at um, Hayride in a different way and, and I was just, I enjoyed it a whole lot more. Definitely. No. Uh, it, it was a fun time. I really enjoyed it. No, I agree. Like, I, think, I think my only critique of it would be the, the, the use of the curb TV. Like, I just felt like that was kind of like one of the lower moves, but outside of that, like, I feel like it was a really good thing. So I'll, I'll come out and say it right now. They were actually supposed to film all original shorts for it. Well, yeah, I figured they were, but it's just time. It's time. They put this, they put this version of the event on in like weeks. Cause yeah, of the whole they issue trying, with, with, they had plans a B and this was probably C. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's definitely interesting, like what Rob was saying. It's, uh, you know, when I was looking at uh, the kind of like uh, 
lineup of haunts that we had, like the choice of this haunt season, you know, at first it's definitely that like, ah, shit, you know, you're missing your AJN, you're not scary farm, all your big, um, all your big um, staples. But uh, I think like in retrospect, I think it's, I think this was probably a really good and, uh, and uh, needed year for the haunt community because it really like you needed to innovate here. Like this really pushed people's creative limits and some worked better than others. And um, I think it definitely widened, it leveled the playing field a little bit. So now there's a little more, you know, there's not the like monopoly that Universal and Knots and those other haunts might have. It kind of like, uh, it gave a new, um, gave a new corner of the market that didn't exist. And I'm kind of excited to see what comes like in the next few years. Because, you know, I mean, some, some of these people, like you were saying, the, uh, the car wash is coming back, right? Yeah, car wash is coming back next year. So that's something I guess a lot of people, I mean, listen, the way I look at it, it's a haunt and you get a free car wash out, or not free car wash, but you get a car wash out of it. It's worth it. Exactly. But it's, it's cool. It's like we have these new formats. And I think like when people start getting really good at these and we might not have like the exact coronavirus restrictions that we have right now. I think it could be really sick. I think it could be really, really sick. Um, <clears throat> bring back Hormate here. Who said that? Who said that? I second that. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> bring back Hormate here. Bring back. <laughs> I'm, I'm on board too. I want to just see a Jason come out the water. <laughs> That's all I want to see. That was beautiful. <laughs> um, but that was haunt season 2020. So what can you expect from the Knights of Horror going forward, leading up to next haunt season? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We're done. We're, <laughs> we're seasonal. See you guys. All right, we're done, guys. See you. All right, we're done. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, <laughs> no. we'll be back in. Uh, we'll be back in July. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be working uh, when I get back from Arizona. I want to. I want to work on a little bit in November to get some scare actors and some haunts on for November. Usually November, as of last year, we started Scare Actor Appreciation Month. This year, we want to extend it to also home haunts and any of the haunting haunters that put on something this year so we're gonna do scare actor slash uh haunter appreciation month because uh i i think not on top of the characters who who put the hard work and dedication this year that was a very tough year for everyone um we also got to give thanks to the people who actually saved halloween this year and put on haunts so i, I think i'm gonna reach out to a couple of the home haunts that want to come back on the show talk about their year and just and just personally thank them so you can expect maybe some podcasts of that uh, this this uh, coming month. Also, uh, I've been in talks with a new scare group that is coming on the market uh, called uh, Scare Squad Society, SSS. Um, and they uh, have a pretty tight group with them, and we're going to probably be scheduling a podcast with them. I think there's like seven or eight members, so that's going to be a fun podcast. Wowzers. Pod that's going to be a fun podcast. <laughs> You're going to have like 15 little squ squares there. Um, but that will be a fun podcast. I want to get to know them. Uh, they literally are up and coming. This is their first year as a group, and um, I'm excited to talk with them. So we're going to schedule that. Uh, but uh, Will brought up a, uh, a thing that we do. It has been a tradition now on Nights of Horror for, for the last two years, and I was talking to Sammy about this earlier. Um, but in December, we will be doing a Krampus live stream, our third annual Krampus live stream. So we'll be live streaming Ted, uh, not Ted Doherty, Mike Doherty. That's his name. Mike Doherty's uh, Krampus uh, film. Um, obviously, you guys know his work from Trick or Treat, and he did uh, the amazing Krampus film. So uh, Christmas time, we will be uh, doing uh, about near Christmas. We still haven't planned the date yet, but we'll be doing a Krampus live stream for everyone. So we'll, we'll, when we plan the date and we'll finalize that, we'll let you guys know as soon as possible. Uh, we also have a lot of new shows coming to the channel and maybe shows returning to the channel. Um, obviously, I can announce now that Maze Treatment's is renewed for season two. Um, so we're going to start doing that maybe April, but we're going to start looking for people pretty soon. Maybe no. now, no, <laughs> probably like the new year, maybe January. We'll start doing the hunt and, and finalizing a list. We're going to do eight people this year. Um, eight participants and, uh, we're going to do a uh, eight, four, two. So, uh, it works out for everyone. Uh, and there might be some new faces coming back. There might be some returning faces coming back. We don't know yet. Um, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Maybe I'll even have Rob represent the Howling Hour. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. The only the only difference for this year though, we're not voting for people anymore. We're gonna leave it to you guys. 
we want you guys to uh when we do mainstream in season two we want you guys to be very involved with that and this year we decided to uh let you guys vote so what will happen is um the day the videos go up we will be posting up polls to see who won and on the next episode we will be announcing that but when it comes time to finals the day before i will let you know what mazes are going to be involved and you get to vote for that so when come time the finals you can see who wins um maze treatments uh 2021 that will be returning hopefully in april uh and maybe lasting uh to the beginning of the summer uh we're gonna be launching a new show we're gonna start filming tonight actually called uh knights of horror factor fiction we're gonna choose four paranormal ghost uh ufo urban legend videos and i'm gonna test the crew to let them know are these fake or are these real? They're all going to be fake. Sammy just has been saying that all day. They're all going to be fake. Sammy doesn't believe. He's not He's not, He's not. not the X-Files. He doesn't want to believe. I don't want to believe because if I believe, then that means they can come after me. Um, just kidding. So that is definitely something in the works. Also something that uh, I might be returning shows, uh, Horror Icon Mashup. I did a couple episodes of that where I take some of the best well-known horror icons and put them together and who would win in a fight. Uh, I can obviously bring any of the guys on now, and one person can uh, vote for one, one person can vote for the other, and we can have a referee, so that would be very fun. Uh, timelines might be returning, history videos might be returning, uh, and I want to do something special pretty soon where we uh, check out horror movie locations in California. Ton of content for the off season. That is basically your teaser for what is coming soon with the Knights of Horror because we don't just cover haunts. We do all things horror related and we want to keep the content flowing for you all year. Uh, and we want to keep the positive vibes coming. We want everyone to come to this channel with all the bullshit going on in the world. We want you guys to get away from that bullshit for just a few minutes, maybe an hour, and just enjoy our content because we this is the positive zone. We want to keep it positive. We want everybody to feel safe when they come to our channel. So, yeah, and the is, words of SoCal Exploring, I believe, is uh, positivity is key. Positivity is key. Shout out to you, Scott. But that is your teaser for what's coming November, December, and 2021. Onward. 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 Um, so we got a lot to. We got a lot of work to do, boys. And I hope you guys are all ready. Um, we're gonna try. Been working get, out, and I'm ready. Clanging and banging. 5 a.m. every day. 5 a.m. We're gonna try to have everyone involved. I know a lot of people have busy schedules uh, between college applications, between work, between life in general. Uh, but we're gonna try our best to get as much of these guys together and. One new member that is coming very soon. Uh, we will be announcing that further. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's Knights of Horror in a nutshell right there. <laughs> Hope you guys are excited. I'm very excited. I mean, just announcing that, I, I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of work, but um, you, can, you can at least expect two to three videos a, a week from us uh, going forward now. Haunt season schedule goes all over the place, but I want to try to go back to that two to three videos a week so you guys can get at least a podcast and an original video out there. So... I I got one question for my crew. Are you guys ready? No. Absolutely. I, I'm always ready. Rob's positive. <laughs> <laughs> Rob. Rob, I think you might be taking Sammy's place pretty soon. <laughs> Bro, what if I just retire right now? I could uh I could never take Sammy's place, although I uh could stand next to him as one of three great tag team partners. <laughs> Come on, guys. The shield. Come on, I guys. know. We, me and Sammy did it. We did oh, okay. It. I was, wasn't sure. Miss. Wasn't sure. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Right I, there. I don't think Will... Okay, Will can get in. Will get yeah, in. Will can get in. Will get... I don't think Will's waiting. Yeah, there we go. Will, that, Will, gotta, Will here we go. This, this one pretty soon. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Too sweet. Yeah. Uh, that is going to do it today for today's episode of the Miles Horror Podcast. Rob Locks Focus. Rob off focus for a little bit. <laughs> At least he's not like uh, that. That incident with Zombie Chris, where it said no, no card available or no chip available. <laughs> that was funny. Um, that is gonna do it today for the Milestone Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, Sammy, where can they find us? Yeah, go. It's easy, bro. This is light work now. Now that you told me the secret to success, um, Twitter you catch us at Knights of Horror and at Instagram at the Knights of Horror. If you're feeling a little extra representational. And you want that chilly sweater weather 
sweater. Why don't you drop down over here on the links? We got the merch that'll make you perch on that's top a, of your house. That's a good catch catchphrase. The merch I like that it. will make you I like perch. It. That's the only thing I could think of that. That was merch. good right off the bat right now. Um, that was really good. Uh, and Will, if they like our content on YouTube, what can they do? Uh, they can hit the subscribe button down below, down below right like there. <laughs> and Rob, if they want to be notified every time we put up a video, what else should they do? Oh, yeah. You got to hit that little notification bell and hit all. Hit all, all right there. All. Also... We like to hear from you guys, so leave some comments below if you guys are excited for what's coming in the future of Nights of Horror and if you guys can relate to Haunt Season in 2020. Also, hit that like button if you guys enjoyed today's podcast. Also, if you guys are audio listeners, we are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, all these podcasting streaming places. If you guys are listening, uh, <laughs> if you guys are listening to audio, appreciate you guys. For all my audio listeners out there. Yeah, and I definitely appreciate all the audio, but you get to you definitely miss the video. Yeah, the video <laughs> is like where it's at. And uh that's where you get the, the best experience from the podcast. But listening to it, you know, if you guys are at work and you just want to listen to it, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Whatever you whatever podcast uh network server you, you want to use. Hopefully we, we're all on there, but uh we, we love each and every one of you. You guys stay safe out there. Twenty twenty is almost over. We hang in there, we're almost there. We love each and every one of you, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Fire power. You should do like a. You should do like a.